A young player, 17, when he raised the trophy in the Staples Center. Only now can he drink in North America. But when it comes to <laughs> celebrations, however, the celebrations have come thick and fast over all these years. Absolutely. Now, we'll be hearing from a number of the pros in the next few minutes. But until then, we get to talk about how SKT closed out this series. Are you sure? The fans don't seem to want us to be told. I know, really. They're going to make our jobs difficult, but we got to push through. Most of the fans still giving a standing ovation to SKT. They know what it means to have SKT win another championship and to witness their greatness in League of Legends, which is truly unprecedented. And they're just trying to get all they can out of this experience. We only got four games. They're going to try and make the duration five. Yeah, I like it. But we again, we have to reflect, too, on the team that challenged them here. We have to remember the achievement of G2 Esports here coming into just coming into today, let alone how far they pushed SKT in the series. And, and I mean, to me, G2 really went above and beyond today, above and beyond the expectations of, you know, the players and the analysts and the fans. And they did challenge SKT. Not only did they take a game, but they pushed them into the limit in, in multiple others. And I think that there's a lot to be said for that. And this team has really redefined themselves, this MSI, and going into Worlds, they will be a threat. They will be a team that people are looking to and respecting. It, they're no longer a joke. Absolutely. I mean, people talk about the gap, right? The gap is always a question. As a Korean caster, if I get interviewed, is the, where's the gap at? Is it closing? I feel like I should get a personal sponsorship from the gap, given how much I have to talk about it. What we can say today is that the gap between SKT and G2, it was there. But the, it wasn't that big. Is, are we saying now SKT and Europe? No, but SKT and G2, there was actually a competitive series played here for at minimum the first three games. And that is a huge compliment to pay a team. It's a bridgeable gap at this point. <laughs> a pretty long bridge. We still. get to see the best team from every region come together here at MSI. And SKT, two years in a row now, has shown how much better they are than those teams. And the answer that these teams are going to have to have when they come to world, these number one teams from all these regions, is what else can they add to their game? Because they were all the best of the best of their region, but that didn't necessarily translate. And I think G2, more than other teams, were able to focus on MSI even back in the spring split, trying to develop a play style that could at least compete with SKT, and they were able to do that here today. And even within MSI, the growth that this team showed from day one where they played to today, it's, it's like a completely different team. They improved, they learned, they adapted, and they showed that they can be at a much higher level uh, than we had expected. And let's go on an org level. Remember, we had IEM Cologne, a few, sorry, IEM Katowice a few months ago. A lot of teams opted out of that. Jet lag, didn't want to show strategies. G2 went there, wasn't admittedly in Europe, but they went there, they made the final. They got some international experience, they made the final, and now they're on the international stage again with the infrastructure there again. So different from a year ago. And the adaptation and amount of poise they had was noticeable for this team. Yeah, I had to check what all the noise was about. They're cheering Peanut getting set up for his interview for the <laughs> past two minutes. Yeah, it's been absolutely electric in this venue for the whole two weeks that we've been down here. We have to give our nod to the Brazilian I crowd. I love the fans. I mean, it, it's hilarious. It's like everywhere they count down the last 10 seconds. These guys count down the last 10 seconds to every minute, 30 minutes starting before the show. Like the amount of excitement and energy in the building has been incredible. I don't know, that looks cheer worthy yeah. to me, Jack. I, had to, I just heard this well. They did an interview with Peanut for the Brazilian crowd. Oh, so they're also go. cheering that. That's why we, we're only hearing ourselves yeah. in our headset <laughs> right now. And then the, 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 the roar of the crowd itself. You know, in a tournament though, which felt so unpredictable, at least through the group stages, right? We had teams beating everyone in every which way, you know, not just triangles of wins and losses. I have to give credit to you guys here on the final day, getting your predictions correct. Oh, I yeah. want oh. to extend that to all three of you. Well done. <laughs> we did. Well done. Yes. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> he predicted it so long in advance, he brought props. There I did. It is, right? Little do you know, he has props of all six teams with their tri Yeah, <laughs> definitely. <Ooh>. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, but again I, again, I think that does speak to, again, the performance that G2 put up today, the fact that everyone did come in so definitively. We we're talking about this tournament as the, is this going to be the undefeated run for SKT, right? Will they be unchallenged through groups, through bracket stage, and end up winning their first international tournament without a loss, as you see G2 on your screens right now, making their way back into the venue. Warm welcome, lots of cheers from the fans as well, thanking the fans for all the support that they've thrown their way throughout their journey here these last two weeks. Yeah, this crowd has been so good to G2, and I really feel like this means so much to them as a team because they were the black sheep of Europe for a lot after having those poor international showings. And even with just a few group stage interviews, or a few group stage victories, this entire crowd seemed to get behind them. So one final lap for G2. Thank the crowd and have the crowd thank them.
Perks out in front here. I mean, he gave it his all, especially in those in this bracket stage. When you look at the series yesterday, the series today, he was working. It really was, you know, the coming out for Perks, his tournament to really show how dominant he could be on the international level. I think this guy had a lot of respect from his peers, from the fans already, but he showed that he can compete on the very highest levels internationally, and I think he moved way up the rankings for most people this tournament. Standout performances from him. We've got the Rocks in the bot lane, Sven and Mithy. These guys have been solid performers for the team since they joined. And then we've got to talk about the two guys who stepped up huge. Again, Trick, Expect, these guys, I mean, we were we were calling for it all tournament long. When are they going to step up? What are the new champion picks they're going to pull out? And both of them delivered. And you're waiting for the moment for them to be exposed, especially by Hooney and Peanut, mechanically especially. On paper, huge gap. You didn't feel like you saw the gap between those two players. Expect and Trick both had their moments in this series, and that's, again, why you can be so earnest in saying it was a great final. Sure, it wasn't 3-2. We didn't hear the silver scrapes, but it was competitive largely all the way through, and that's already a big thing for our first European versus uh, European final in a Riot final since season one. Now, as some quiet falls over the arena, let's go ahead and hear more about that series, handing it off to Shox, who's on stage with one of our 2017 MSI champions. Thank you very much, guys. I definitely am. I'm joined here by a dominant force in that run. It is Peanut Sky from the jungle uh, and winning his first international title, which is why he came to SKT. So, Peanut, the first question I have to ask is, what does it mean to you to get to lift that very first international trophy with SKT? The Peanut 선수는 우승하기 위해서 SKT에 와서 이렇게 첫 국제 대회를 우승하셨는데요. 이렇게 SKT에 오자마자 이런 큰 성공을 거두는 것에 대한 소감을 말씀해 주세요. 어, 일단 SKT가 원래 기존 멤버들이 너무 잘해서 코치님 포함하고 사무국까지 너무 지원을 아낌없이 해주셔서 이렇게 제, 제가 저는 딱 실력만 제할 것만 하면 되는 사, 상황을 만들어줬거든요. 그래서 일단 SKT 덕분에 우승한 것 같아요. I just want to thank all the SKT members. When I first joined the team, it was all because they had such a good infrastructure, they had good players, good coaching staff, so I just had to fit in and do my own game. So that's why I think we had such good, such good success in this tournament. Well, you say you have all the things that work for you, but you also had an incredible tournament, some standout games. How do you reflect on how much weight you carried yourself into that victory? 이제 팀이 물론, 물론, 물론 잘해줬겠지만 피나 선수도 정말 엄청난 활약을 보여주셨는데요. 피나 선수는 이번 대회에서 이제 본인 활약을 어떻게 평가하시나요? 어, 그냥 가끔씩 좀 이제 피드백 제가 못한 부분도 있었지만 이제 큼직큼직하게 좀 잘한 것 같아서 이번 MSI 대회는 기대치에 맞게 했던 것 같아요. So even though there were some small mistakes, but I think overall I played up to my name, to my reputation. Definitely. Uh, the spotlight is all on SKT. I do want to ask about your opponents in this one, G2, who are forced that a lot of people were looking at to do something internationally. How do you reflect on their performances as an opponent today? 네, 그러면 이번 결승전에서 상대했던 G2 팀에 대해서 여쭙고 싶은데요. 많은 사람들이 G2에 이렇게 국제 대회 결승전에서 SKT 이렇게 괴롭힐 거라고 예상 못 했는데 G2 팀에 대해서 평가 좀 내려 주세요. 어, 일단 G2 팀은 일단 지금 대세 픽을 제대로 알고 있어서 이제 그런 픽 픽밴이 일단 엄청 중요했거든요. 그래서 이제 아마 이제 퍼플이 좀 불리해서 저희가 퍼플에서 한판 지지 않았을까라고 생각해요. So I think G2 they really knew how to play the champions that fit in this current meta. So it's really important to uh, prepare the pick and bands. And I think overall at this meta, it's, the blue side has more advantage over the purple. So uh, I think that's why we dropped one game against G2, but overall they played really well too. Uh, and stepping away from the series, I saw you snapping some pictures with the crowd in the background and just they're screaming peanut, peanut, peanut. In general, what is all of the, uh, or what has the event been like and what has the energy been like here playing in Brazil with all these people chanting your name every game? The Peanut 선수 인터뷰 전에 이제 이렇게 팬들 관중을 뒤로 하고 사진 찍는 모습 보여주고 되게 즐거운 모습 많이 보여주셨는데 이번 대회 전반적으로 브라질에서 어떤 경험을 했고 이런 대회에서 경기를 한그 소감이 어떤지 말씀해 주세요. 어, 일단 브라질 와서 느낀 게 정말 흥이 많은 나라라고 느꼈고요. 저도 이렇게 막 노래 틀고 춤추고 있는 거 보면 저도 그냥 어깨 흔들게 되는 나라인 것 같아요. 저절로. 그리고 일단 브라질 팬들이 이렇게 너무 너무 큰 사랑 많이 주셔서 진짜 너무 감사드리고 오늘 이렇게 많이 보러 와주셔서 너무 감사합니다. 감사합니다. Uh, first, I, I want to thank all the fans who came today to watch the game and like. Through the past couple of days, I just felt that the crowd is so energetic and there's so much energy in them. 
and like even when I see them like, like have the, have some music on, it's dance. I also get like get some to groove on a bit. <laughs> and overall, it's just a great experience playing here at MSI. You even get some confetti for your interview. That's how good you've been doing. Uh, final question, maybe you got a, your medal from a legend in football, uh, a very popular sport here in Brazil. How much do you know about Ronaldo, and how special was it to have him present you with the prize? 이제 우승 후에 이제 메달 메달 세레모니에서 축구 전설을 꼽히는 호나우두 분께 이제 메달을 선사 받으셨는데 호나우두 선수들 얼마나 잘 아시는지 그리고 소감 몇 대인지 말씀해 주세요. 일단 호나우두 선수 진짜 너무 레전드 선수여서 제 네이버에 검색하고 이렇게 인터넷 검색하고 다좀 준비해 왔거든요. <웃음> 근데 너무 이제 이제 시간 지체되니까 하고 일단 일단 월드컵 네. 이별두 개를 다한 선수잖아요. 레전드 선수고 네, 펠레, 지쿠 다음으로 이제 이세명 레전드 선수라 일단 저는 이렇게 레전드 이렇게 레전, 전설적인 사람이 저한테 메달을 줬다는 게 너무 지금 뜻깊은 것 같아요. 이런 경험은 다시는 못할 것 같아서. Uh, when I heard that Ronaldo will be here at the medals at the closing ceremony, I did my own research on the internet and saw how much of a legend he is in football. And I saw like he ha he won two World Cups, and he's like as legendary as like Pele and like Zico and other like so soccer legend football players. So like overall, the experience was so great for me, and I'm not sure if I can have the same experience ever again. So sign 하려고 sign 받으려고 유니폼까지 국가 브라질 유니폼까지 사왔습니다. Uh, I've even bought a uh, uh, Brazilian uh, football jersey to Ooh. get his signature. Yeah. Cool. I hope it works for you, uh, Pina. Thank you very much. Congratulations, a legend in his own right. Uh, fantastic words. Uh, now back over to you guys. Thank you very much, Shox. Without a doubt, Peanut has made a name for himself over the last couple of years, capturing the hearts of millions at Worlds last year, making the transition over to SKT and slotting in seamlessly, it seems. I mean, no kidding. His scoreline this series, 25, 4, and 24, with 78% kill participation. Like, that is an insane international finals debut. And it's the fact that it looks seamless now is what's so cool, because I saw the, the building blocks of this, where he would gank bot lane, and Banger Wolf would be trying to freeze, and they just wouldn't react to the gank. He would literally do damage and just kind of have, like, a walk of shame going out from the bot. So it wasn't seamless at the start. It's crazy how one split later, it looks seamless. One split later, everyone can step up or step back depending on what's needed. And that seems to be the SKT infrastructure we hear so much about in, in practice. And that's kind of the thing I take away. Yeah, but I really do feel like Peanut is Faker's first jungler who isn't just a servant to Faker in nope. a lot of ways. He's not the guy who's camping mid lane and is the 2v1 in the mid lane. He really made this his own. There were even moments when Faker was killing jungle camps and Peanut would fly over the wall and <laughs> smite it away from him. Peanut wanted his farm too, and he made the best of it, which is something we haven't seen from other SKT junglers. Now let's just hope he gets that Ronaldo signature. <laughs> All right, well, it's safe to say that everyone on SK Telecom showed up today, but it's time to name our MSI MVP. And the honor goes to their support, Wolf. Now, as we start to, oh, here we go. Let's talk about Wolf. I mean, Wolf is someone who has complained bitterly about not getting MVPs back over in the LCK. Never seems to be voted. Support is overlooked. You could not overlook MSI big plays like this. Yeah, and he did do a great social campaign to give himself a lot of credit, but he showed it and made it work in this series. What would Tom you rate Kent his social campaign, Jeff? 10 out of 10, <laughs> I think, in all categories. Like everything else. Just as he's a 10 out of 10 support. And I think, I think the, the really impressive part about him, it's not just the playmaking, like the Zyra, it's the little things. You know, Tom Kench, he's able to play and position so well. Lulu, throughout the tournament even, you know, being able to consistently knock people up with the wild growth, you know, stopping things like Rengar ultimates and jumps from Kha'Zix. Like, he's just a total package player. Yeah, I mean, think about his Nami, right? There's a, you could name any support pick, and this guy seems to have risen to a point of dominance on each of them in some regard. Yeah, and also the growth. I feel like two years ago at MSI, when SKT lost to EDG, Wolf was the worst playing player on SKT in that series. And he has, in my opinion, improved so steadily since that point. And now I'm fully confident saying he's the best sport in the world. Again, it's consistency from the bot lane for both him and Bang, right? We talk about even in those that first game, right? It was, oh, wow, Faker's 0-4. We got Bang and Wolf making plays, looking for those Ash arrows, being the consistent, you know, laners for the team while you have playmakers elsewhere. And that's the cool thing, right? It's the fact that, Sure, they had a dearth of power in the mid lane because the Cassiopeia wasn't going to be contributing much, but other people stepped up. G2 didn't do that last part of pushing in, trying to force 
disadvantages in other areas. They only focused on the mid lane, and that's why other people picked up the slack. And when you have Hooney, when you have Peanut, when you have Bang and Wolf, who've always been the dependable side of things, you have the luxury of having one part fail if the other four stay strong. And that really is the beauty of, of the new SKT lineup. There's They can back each other up from all different roles. You can have carry performances from all five players, and, and it's what makes them so unique as a team because almost every team has that point of attack that you like to talk about, whether it's in draft or it's you know a specific player. And SKT, it just doesn't really feel like they have that anymore, so you really have to be able to compete on that level with all your players. Yeah, and I think at this stage in League of Legends, you don't win championships unless you can do something like that. As soon as you have a point of attack that makes sense, it happens. And I mean, I feel like what G2 tried to attack was the fact that SKT maybe had a little bit of passivity in the early game and you might be able to outscale them. That worked one game out of four because SKT was still the best of that and the credit has to go to all the players in that scenario. We have a few more moments while we wait and get another interview set. Want to talk to more members of this championship team here as again, we mentioned it's a team effort and it's always been a team effort for SK Telecom. Different games, different carries. We've got the support staff behind them. This is a tried and true proven team organization that has shown up here today, a much deserved second title. Now, as we start to close things out here at MSI 2017, Freak, I'm going to toss it back over to you, ask you guys if you got any final thoughts on the competition over the last month. Thank you very much, Dash. And yeah, I think it's just been a very compelling tournament here where we came in saying, all right, it's SKT yep. and a bunch of other teams. Can SKT make it the perfect tournament? <laughs> and, and, and the thing is, it was so much more competitive than that, which was great to see. Again, I talked about it during the cast, but Gigabyte Marine stepping up, doing much, much better than anyone expected. You had you know, very, very tight games where TSM maybe made top four. G2 into the finals was better than expected. And then even the, the, the G2 SKT was super great as well. Yeah, I mean, it wasn't even coming into the tournament. It's SKT and a bunch of other teams. It was SKT, a bunch of other teams, and Gigabyte Marines. Right. And then as the tournament went on, we saw them get absorbed into this group. And that was yeah. one of the you know really exciting things for group stages, where they're keeping teams honest in the early game, unrelenting aggression, yeah. you know, forcing out mistakes and forcing teams to actually build on themselves during the tournament. And that's one of the biggest things for G2. Their growth over this tournament exactly. has, has, has been exceptional. Yeah, I really like those. So like Team WE being part of the group at first, but then kind of advancing a little bit further ahead. They, they look better than the rest, which is why people were so surprised when G2 took them down in the semifinal. And of course, like the tiebreaker towards the end with so many teams so close to each other. Like we were one game away from G2 not even making playoffs. And then G2 would never have beat WE, never gone to this final, taken a game <laughs> off SKT either. Like it was so close. The and alternate timelines. The, uh, yeah, all the groups, almost all the group stage game wins from G2 were gigantic comebacks for yeah. 80 percent of the time G2 is supposed to lose that game and yet they found the late game shot calling to work and you know in retrospect it makes sense where if they've got this kind of good late game shot calling and then Trick actually catches up to play the early game sure. then G2 is a full-fledged team and just as Jat was saying that he believes with full confidence Wolf is the best support in the world if G2 plays like this I believe in full confidence G2 is the second best team in the world they made this final look better than the LCK final against KT Rolster where that team is supposed to be built to beat SKT this level of performance for G2, number two team in the world for me. Yeah, the hard thing is just keeping, you know, that level right now, because they did peak, yeah. you know, in these playoffs. Course. Best they've played. <laughs> Best they've played. So now they go back to Europe, they won't have the same competition, and then they got a show at Worlds, where we expect them to obviously be, that they are again, one of the absolute best teams in the world. That's one of the things, though. I do have confidence, you know, moving towards this year's Worlds once again with this team. And they had to rebuild that over a very long time. It wasn't just last year's MSI where they disappointed. It was very last true. year's Worlds as well. But we don't talk about that anymore. <laughs> That's in the past. It exactly. is in the past. GT right now are the story of a team in the finals. But let's talk about SKT a little bit more because we have an interview with Shox and SKT's master of the mid lane. Thank you very much, guys. I also wanted to catch up with Faker, of course, after that victory. And first, ask him generally uh, how he reflects on the performance uh, of SKT in the finals over G2. Uh, even though I'm glad we're winning the series, I think the series went much more difficult than we anticipated. And like the game actually didn't go as we prepared, so there's still a lot of regrets about the series. Um, that seems a bit different from when I just spoke to Peanut. He was saying how this was a very special victory. I think it still is for you guys, but does that mean that it's kind of a victory you look at with in mind that you will have something to work on going forward, that it didn't all go the way you planned, which is something that doesn't happen that often, I believe, for SKT. 
이제 그 이전에 인터뷰했던 피너 선수는 좀 되게 만족스러운 우승이라 승 경기라고 말씀하셨는데 이제 피커 선수는 살짝 좀 인터뷰 들어보니까 이제 비록 우승했지만 이번 우승 경기를 통해 좀더 보완할 점도 있고 좀더 고칠 점이 있는 것좀 느껴졌는데 어떻게 생각하시나요? 어, 우승한 거는 만족스럽지만 근데 경기력이나 그런 부분에서 좀 저희는 너무 안 좋았기 때문에 아쉬움이 남는 것 같고 뭐 그래도 우승했으니까 음, 비행기를 재밌게 탈것 같아요. 네. So, oh, so I think that our performance wasn't like our best. And still, there are a lot of points, a lot of areas for improvement. So, but overall, we won the tournament. So I think it's going to be a good ride back home. Yeah. Good, good flight back home. Yeah. A good flight back home. That it will be. Uh, could you finally tell me something about the atmosphere here? We've heard from a lot of players that this is the loudest crowd they've ever been, and that they're very intimidating and always bringing the energy. What has been your experience overall? 많은 선수들이 이번 대회 관중들이 가장 열정적이고 정말 가장 이제 시끄러운. 정말 엄청난 이제 팬들이 많이 모였다고 말씀하셨는데 페이커 선수는 이번 대회 진행하면서 이번 여기 대회 경기하는 게 어떤 어땠었는지 이번 이런 팬들과 경기하는 게 어떠 어땠는지 소감을 말씀해 주세요. 확실히 여, 저도 그 생각에 동의하고요. 사람들이 어뭐 굳이 경기장뿐만 아니라 밖에 나가도 다들 에너지가 넘치는 모습이라서 확실히 관중으로서는 가장 베스트인 것 같아요. So I agree with all the other players, and I think the crowd here was the best so far. Wow. And like not even in the venue, but even outside, I could just see how energetic the, the Brazilian people are. Yeah, people are. All right. Well, high praise from Faker. Thank you very much, Faker. Congratulations. Another title for the Ronaldo of League of Legends. Back over to you guys. Thank you very much, Shox. I mean, something that strikes me every time we talk to Faker after a big win like this is his mind immediately goes, to the fact that it wasn't a perfect win, mm -hmm. that there's still something to strive for. And to me, that's the mark of a true great, right? He's always looking ahead to what he hasn't yet achieved and already thinking about how he's going to get there. That's, that's how you stay at the top. That's how you become the best and stay the best. As soon as I think he isn't looking at it from that point of view, that's when people could perhaps pass him. Yeah, I'm waiting for Faker's retirement speech 17 <laughs> years from now. <laughs> It's 38 the cap? Yeah, then? I have no yeah, idea. That's Just when, when he starts when calling done. out all the people that didn't give him credit as the greatest player of all time, he'd be like, I would like to thank Jad Spawn and the Fischio for not putting me at number one on their world's <laughs> top one, 20 one players oh, yeah. in one of the years. And also, I would like to thank much like Michael Jordan did in the NBA when right. he retired. I never going to make that mistake again, are you, never satisfied, and you have to call him the best. Yeah, absolutely. We love to see him up there on the stage every time performing and pushing the limits of League of Legends as an individual. Now, yesterday, we asked you to share your favorite moments from the last three weeks, and you delivered. Let's check out some of the biggest plays of MSI 2017 brought to you by Acer. Pyro Might Lull was as surprised as we were at the first appearance of the Purifier in the mid lane and tweeted, Hi, I'm Shiei, and my pocket pick is Lucian. Oh, man. This the oh, the oh, oh, God. God. killing! The sideways! Shiei takes a tower shot! Impossible! <laughs> Style points. Let's see. Just straight culling, point blank, under the turret. Cuts it off early to get the double shot. Life steals Ooh. off of minions on the way out. Oh my god, he played that so well. I mean, we only saw that one more time throughout group stages, not to as much, or uh, during bracket stages, not to as much success, but it was great to see a pick that we had heard about at the beginning of the play-ins yep. finally make its way onto the rift. I mean, Faker has to look mortal once in a while. You know, he has to keep the interest up. So. <laughs> yeah, Faker's not the there. only one who can do stuff perfectly. Shea did that dive perfectly as far as the execution is concerned. I can't wait to see him yet again on another international stage, perhaps right up there against Faker again. Now, who could forget the NAEU game where G2 took TSM within an inch of their nexus? Back inside the base, the next is getting hit, Sven wants it, Perk's still hitting it, this could be it, but Pierre can back onto that, and they think it's Sven as well, TSM next is alive, they're going for expect, GA is popped, does he have the damage, he cues in from a move, he cues him back, Trick oh, needs five autos, the flash missed the harpoon, one, two, three, four, here comes Tom Catch, and they're going to stop him, TSM's approaching the top side, 20 second respawns, can they get him, they're going to get the damage, I thought I thought that Lombardo is the Lombardo. I can't stop. I can't stop. I can't stop. Lombardo, Lombardo, Lombardo. Nice, 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 nice. Lombardo, Jason's here. Go in, go in, go in, go in. And then he next, look next, 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 next. I can't hit next, look at that guy in my face. And get a Lucian. Nice. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. He's up, he's up, he's up. It's only Lee. Only one person has to be. Let's kill him. Vincent, Vincent, Vincent. Go, go, check, check, check. 
Can you eat him? I can't, I can't, I can't. Kill him, guys. Oh, nice. nice. End the game, push, end the game. Push, 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 push. Defend the minions, defend the minions. Yeah. Oh, you guys should be Bring the wave, bring the wave. We're fine, we went, we went. Drop in 10, drop in 10. Oh, holy fuck. And so does I'm fine. Oh, TSM in the strangest game I have cast. Take the win over G2. And this is why it's hard to play the what if games as far as group stage standings and tiebreakers go, because what if G2 would have done anything better during that? And then they would have had that extra win in the group stage and not had to deal with all these tiebreak scenarios. So crazy experience right there. I mean, that one was so insane. The casters are jumping up and down. We were all jumping up and down backstage watching. The fans are going nuts. I remember that game for a long time. Plenty of crazy games, plenty of exciting games throughout this tournament. For a final word, though, with our winners, let's go ahead and head back to Shots, who's standing by with the mind behind the two-time MSI champs. Thank you very much, guys. Also catching up with the coach for SK Telecom after that victory. And, well, just speaking to Faker, he didn't seem super satisfied with the team's performance, so I'd love to get the coach's opinion on uh, how SKT played in the final and over the tournament. Okay. 네, 근데 어 경기가 생각보다 어 그렇게 좋진 않았어요. 경기력이. 그래서 좀더 이제 한국 가서 좀 실수 이런 부분을 더 보완을 많이 해야지 롤드컵 썸머 이런 것도 우승할 수 있을 것 같아요. 근데 만족스러운 경기력은 아니었습니다. So I agree with Faker. Uh, I'm not too satisfied with our overall performance. So I think that we have to go back to Korea and go over our mistakes and go do a lot of feedback sessions. So only in that case, in that way we can again win summer and even uh, go up to a world finals. World championship. Well, obviously, you had the, the big task of together with the coaching staff incorporating Huni and Peanut into the lineup, which may not be an easy task, but how do you think that integration has gone so far? And what do you see the potential uh, of this lineup? So I think that we're still in the, in the process, progress of integrating those two players, and in order to win Worlds, we still have more to work on with those two players and the entire team. All right, well, we'll be looking forward to that. Thank you very much, Koma. Congratulations. Great to hear from the coach for a change. Back over to you, guys. Thank you very much, Shox. The work is never done for Coach Koma and the rest of the squad. You mentioned sustaining dominance is one of the most difficult things that anyone can do, and they've seemed to have mastered it. I don't know what's going on back there, what their, you know, their system for success is, but it is working. And you say they, and remember, it's it's the two, right? It's the two that have been there since the absolute start in 2013. Obviously, Bang and Wolf, you're following the current path, but it's no, I think it's no surprise that it's those two that are absolutely the most critical. You can see Faker and Koma instantly. They're done with the celebration. Right to the VOD review. Maybe that will be their own mini celebration as we get some of these rewinds. It's been so many. The lifts legacy of the look, if so you will. Many lifts. Very much so. So many lists. But as you mentioned, they have to go back for summer split. Re you got to qualify for Worlds, right? I mean, let's let's consider that you're going back to perform. You got to perform domestically. You got to work on what you got to work on while the game continues to change. And then you got to show up and do it again here at Worlds. And they're going to have KT uh, hot on their heels. I mean, that is a team that was built, you know, they, just to take down SKT. They have not been together for that long, and they are going to be looking to improve. They are going to be extremely hungry uh, to be taking down this team. Yeah, every tournament is SKT versus the field. It was against five other teams in the group stages here. There's 15 other teams that come to the World Championship, an extra bracket stage game they have to deal with. So Worlds is another challenge for them that they have to overcome. And, la and tonight, rather, was SKT versus G2. So one more time, we're going to head back downstairs and hear from one of Europe's finest. Thanks again, guys. Uh, I'm happy to be joined here by Mithy. Obviously, not in the best of spirits, not winning the final, but putting up a good fight. But I just want to give you an open question to start with. How do you reflect on the way things have gone today? Uh, I mean, at first there, there was this hope that we might get 3 0 right? But once we got in-game, it really felt like we could challenge them. And honestly, just 
felt like we were just really, really, it wasn't, we were not far off. We just misplayed more, their team fights were better, and we didn't play very clean in the games where we actually got a lead, and we lost one or two games through that, so yeah, just sucks. Yeah, uh, it obviously sucks. Would you say that your that it would have been obviously better for you guys if you maybe felt like you had no chance? Was it tougher to fight back from that once that game three happened and then the game four happened when the snowball started happening? Did it become tougher and tougher to put up a fight? Uh, and, and we never really stopped believing. We, I mean, on game four we lost Baron really early, so it was really hard. We knew, but we still tried to make plays. We should try to hold the game, you know, and just give them a hard time. Uh, we knew we had to like do some risky stuff, which we did on top lane. We just went ham, you know, and yeah. Uh, I think game three was more of a problem because we had the lead in that game and we just threw it, like we just blew it away. Uh, yeah. Uh, final question. I, I know it's hard to see all the positives now, but if you look back holistically and also as a fan of G2 Esports, which of course I'm unbiased, but uh, you guys have made redemption for yourself. You've redeemed yourself and you've made a lot of heads turn and made a very positive influence. Can you see that yet? And how much do you think that will propel you forward uh, looking towards Worlds and looking towards the rest of the year? I'm, I'm, I'm actually really glad. I mean, after the World Elite game already, I think now that we actually put up a kind of a fight against SKT, it's, it feels even better. But uh, against World Elite, once we won, we already knew, okay, uh, we are redeemed. You know, like, this is, this is the G2 we want to be. There's no international curse. There's no... Uh, there's no memes. It's just it's just us. It's just us doing our best, working hard, you know. And uh, if we would have made, not made out of groups, I would have still been proud of my team because I can feel the progress. I can see it too. Even though maybe we would have not made it out of groups, I I really feel like everyone is working their ass off all the time and really caring too. So I'm just really happy that this whole you know era is over and now we can look at this G2 as just like a strong team that is trying to make. To trying to do good for Europe, right? And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. You know, if we now go to Rose and end up sucking and losing in groups, that's a possibility. But I just want the fans to realize that if that's what happens, it's because G2 sucks or because EU sucks, right? But not because we didn't work hard, you know, or there's memes or there's like a curse. There's no curse, there's nothing, you know? We, we give it our best every time. And last time we failed, this time maybe we don't, you know, but just give us some slack. I think we all remember that speech you made at the end of ULCS. Give us a chance. You've gotten a chance and you've proven to be worthy, uh, at least for now. So congratulations on that. Uh, and I hope you can see all the good you've done when you take a step back. Thank you very much, Mithy. And back over to you guys. Thank you. One last time, Sharks. I mean, the fighting spirit and the never say die mentality were very evident from this squad throughout the entirety of the tournament. It was mentioned their group stage was entirely fighting back from deficits just to get to the bracket stage and then show us what they had in best of five series. Yeah, and I think what's easy to forget at an elite level like this is almost everyone goes home a loser. It's just SKT who's lifting the trophy, so I can see why he's taking it hard, right? As a European fan, you can be happy about the performance and you should cherish it. You can see Mithy has it a little bit, but that doesn't take away from the disappointment. And every pro player really tests their medal on how they back Back, bounce back from disappointment. And I see G2 is bouncing back stronger every single time. And I mean, the thing is, in these tournaments, the margins between, you know, being that victor or being, in this case, in the finals match and getting knocked out in groups can be so ridiculously small. And, you know, it, it's sometimes hard to accept that it, it can be a little bit of luck going your way. It's hard work too, but, you know, you do need these slimmest of margins and, and it can be tough when you feel like you were right there with that team that was in the finals, but you got knocked out and the fans are not yeah. having your back. Papa Smithy, let me ask you a question. As a Korean caster and analyst, does it excite you that G2 challenged SKT to such a degree, looking forward at more international competition and might and what might come from a performance like this? I mean, in so many ways, you know, SKT winning is the standard, but seeing teams find new blueprints to try and fight against them, new strategies perhaps to try and take them down. I have to deal with this domination on a domestic level as well, and even if this informs some of the Korean teams to some ideas and to some belief that SKT are not a wall, they are something that can be surpassed, in a best of five, that part is proving a little bit tougher to get to, but there's a lot to love about what G2 showed here. And the other thing you can say as well, maybe the Korean teams, they've been able to practice a little bit in mystery. Obviously, they've been scrimming behind the scenes and watching SKT. I hope they come in and, and punish SKT at the start of next season. Otherwise, 
We could be all here again in just a couple of months. Hey, maybe one day we'll get there and we will see Titans fall. Now, ladies and gentlemen, after a month of competition, it is time to close the book on the 2017 Midseason Invitational. On behalf of everyone working to bring you all the action from Rio de Janeiro, thank you for joining us, and we'll see you in the summer split.